the Brennick couple conceives again after the loss of their first child. But due to the strict one-child policy in their country, they need to cross borders. As the Mentel Corporation assists the government in implementing the law, their cutting-edge technology becomes the Brennicks and the people's greatest threats. An ex-military couple, John and Karen Brennick, cautiously wait while undergoing border inspection. Karen admits being nervous, but John reassures her everything will be fine, especially since she's wearing a magnetic vest to hide her pregnancy from the scanners. The alarm rings as a pregnant woman is detected at the last inspection stage. She's instantly arrested, making the couple anxious. They pass the entire process, but when they're about to drive, an inspector brings them a suitcase they forgot. Unfortunately, a guard notices Karen's vest, and the soldiers immediately pursue them, releasing canines. John protects Karen and lets himself be bitten by the dogs as his wife runs towards the border. The following day, John and the other lawbreakers get transported to Mantel Corporation's maximum security penitentiary, located in the middle of the desert with no chance of escape. An older man strikes up a conversation with John to ease his nervousness. John explains his situation and adds that his wife luckily crossed the border. Another transgressor, Nino Gomez, scorns the older man for being scared and warns John that those scared will never survive in the facility. Once they enter the facility, they're commanded to remove their clothes to ensure no weapon can be brought. John is inspected when the alarms buzz, so he opens his mouth to reveal his wedding ring. The soldiers confiscate it while a video of prison director Poe plays on the screens to inform them that they'd work to expand the facility further. He also warns them that the facility is equipped with the most advanced technology and a computer called Z1024-7, so escaping is impossible. Next, they're led to where they need to put their heads in the machine. Then, their mouths are forced open to install the Intestinator, a behavior control device. If the detainees cross the yellow lines in the facility, they will feel pain. And if they cross the red line, they'll perish. If they break any rule, they will be punished using the groundbreaking facilities. Afterward, the older man John spoke with earlier panics, and he crosses the yellow line. So the intestinator instantly gives him pain. He crawls to a red line, and the device inside him explodes. As the detainees get transferred to their corresponding floors, Zed briefs them that the facility has 33 floors, and a neutron cannon can connected to their intestinator can end any living organism in the area when commanded. John and Gomez are sent to the same cell, but the small space already has three people in it, Stiggs, D-Day, and Abraham, so they refuse to take them in. However, Zed warns them that their intestinators will be activated due to disobedience, making Stiggs and D-Day fakely welcome the newcomers. The two step into the cell, and Stiggs demands them to pay him rent or else Maddox, his friend who's arrested for taking people's lives, will make them suffer. John declines, and they all squeeze into sleep. However, Abraham tells them not to dream. That night, John dreams about an intimate time with Karen, and Zed scans his head. Unbeknownst to him, what he dreams about is projected onto a screen in the control room where Poe watches. Zed comments that the director seems to be enjoying the scene, which is against protocol since his job is only to monitor. Therefore, he makes John feel pain, and the others laugh at him. The next day, they work in the construction field, and John notices is a strange man. So D-Day explains his mind is messed up as punishment for trying to escape. Suddenly, John hears Gomez's cry for help and sees a burly man trying to touch him. John punches Stiggs to get out of his way and pushes the burly man away. John realizes too late that this is Maddox and the two fight. Zed appears and stops them by giving them pain for breaking the rule. Then, the three get punished by being caged in a narrow laser containment. Gomez is exhausted from standing for hours and almost loses consciousness. So Zed asks him once more about who instigated the fight. Maddox threatens him, so John signals him not to confess. As Gomez is about to reveal who, John shouts that it's him who started the commotion. He's summoned to report to Director Poe and sees Abraham shaving the official's beard. Poe praises Abraham for being an exemplary detainee and mentions his parole, but he admits he will be inconvenienced without the older man's services. Then, he states John's military background as a decorated captain who retired due to losing his entire platoon. The former captain yells at him, but Poe shows him footage of Karen taking a shower with other detainees. He explains that they caught her before she crossed the border. Then, he instructs Don to be obedient if he doesn't like to lose the remaining member of his platoon, Karen, especially since it'd be a waste for the woman is a beauty. Poe instructs Zed to intestinate the couple as a final warning. Afterward, John asks Abraham for information regarding the women's section, and he learns it's on levels A and B, just a few floors above them. Meanwhile, Karen's cellmate cries as her 
contractions begin. She declares that she won't let the officials take her baby, but the staff arrives to send her to the delivery room. Though Karen helps her out of the cell by fighting off the staff, the woman is captured as Zed declares that their babies are the property of Mentel. The next day, Maddox suddenly attacks John, but Poe stops Zed from intestinating them and watches the brawl for entertainment. At first, Maddox overpowers John, but the former captain shows how good he is in manual combat, so the director commands Zed to retract the bridge they're on. John pushes Maddox onto the bridge, and he dangles from it. Poe commands John to end Maddox, but he saves him instead. The detainees cheer for him, including Karen. However, the director activates the neutron cannon and shoots Maddox. Instead of doing the same to John, he intestinates and commands Zed to mind wipe him. Before he gets escorted to the room, Abraham commends his behavior, and John secretly gives Gomez the intestinator of Maddox that he retrieved. Soon after, Karen is brought to the mind wipe chamber under Poe's orders to persuade John to obey him. However, the wife tells her husband to just be himself, and anything he does won't change her love. They're separated immediately, and the mind wiping begins as the machine that John is attached to relentlessly spins. At the same time, John's mind becomes messed up as his memories flash and slowly diminish. After some time, John begins having a nightmare of snakes in the bassinet, making him lose his mind. Three days later, Poe summons Karen into his quarters to show her John's current state. He proposes to release John if the woman remains with him in his quarters for the rest of her stay in the facility as he chooses her to be his companion. Karen declines, but Poe explains that John will perish if he stays in the chamber for one more day. Upon seeing her husband suffer, she reluctantly agrees. John is escorted to his cell, but his mates see how he has already lost his mind and decides to take care of him until he returns to normal. Meanwhile, Poe enjoys watching another intimate dream. Zed warns him that the director is changing due to Karen's presence, which violates the protocol. He becomes upset towards Zed and commands an intestination. Then, Karen enters the room and is about to touch Zed's control, so Poe drags her out and threatens her that she and her child will suffer if she repeats the action. That evening, Karen wakes up upon hearing some noise and is surprised that half of Poe's body is a droid. The director explains that Mentel enhances him, and once a month, he absorbs amino acids, so there's no need to eat or sleep. Karen confirms that he's incapable of intimacy, so Poe tells her he can love instead. He adds that he's one of the first babies at Mentel, so he's special. The revelation bewilders Karen as she now understands what the company does to the babies they gather. On the other hand, Abraham informs John about Karen and his baby, hoping that the catatonic man will respond. Unfortunately, only tears fall from his eyes, but there's no change in his condition. In the director's quarters, Karen pours some liquor for Poe. This is the first time he drinks some, and he truly likes it. When the woman asks him how he feels, he suddenly collapses, and Karen uses the chance to open Zed's system to scan John's brain and restore his memories. Fortunately, she completes the task before the unsuspecting director regains his right mind. The following day, Zed wakes up the detainees, so Stiggs tells the others to wake John, but the man tells them he's awake, and they all get shocked and excited. They brief him that it's been four months, so John asks Abraham about Karen. His friend hesitantly tells him that she moved into Poe's quarters to save John and herself. In anger, John punches the wall, but realizes she's closer to a way out now. Abraham understands that John is thinking of escaping with his wife, so he argues that he can't compromise his job and parole for his attempt. However, John is determined to succeed. Later that day, Abraham finds an opportunity to speak with Karen to inform her of John's recovery and escape plan. The older man genuinely tells her that getting away may cost him his life, and he won't want that to happen to a good man. But Karen confidently declares that he won't fail if she'll help him. In the cell, John shows his friends the intestinator he retrieved from Maddox. D-Day excitedly expresses his desire to study it since machinery is his forte. John becomes reluctant, so D-Day explains that he's the one who blasted a famous bank, but he also destroyed the money, which made his partners turn their backs on him. On the other hand, Karen steals the crystal that contains the facility's map. Just as she holds it, Poe approaches her, so she pretends to yawn, but the man opens her palms and kisses them. Fortunately, she puts the crystal in her mouth. Simultaneously, D-Day becomes overly enthusiastic upon successfully breaking down the intestinator. John asks if he can put it back together and remove the one in his body. D-Day has no confidence to do so, but John doesn't take no for an answer, making the machinist push his boundaries. He also tells John that he'll join his escape since it's been so long since he became inspired. The next day, Karen hands the map to Abraham, but the older man 
man refuses due to the danger it brings. The pregnant woman requests him to do it for her baby, so Abraham gives in. Later, he shows it to his friends, and D-Day explains the map will only work if a laser hits it. He removes the lens of his spectacles and puts the crystal in it so it'll have a holder. Then, he uses the cell laser to project the map. Finally, they discover their way to escape is the heating pipe and the construction area. Unfortunately, D-Day releases the glasses due to the heat, and it's thrown outside of the cell. Zed is about to arrive, so John hurriedly rushes and grabs it, but he triggers the laser and gets burned. D-Day wears his spectacles and laughs at their weird images from the crystal. Soon, Abraham tries to return the crystal and hears Poe's proposal to Karen to divorce John since he'll be a part of the fortress's expansion. Fortunately, Abraham places the crystal before Poe clicks the map to show Karen the facility design. However, the hologram freezes, and the director angrily suspects the woman of touching it. To save her, Abraham speaks up, giving an alibi that he cleaned it upon seeing dust. Poe yells at him and declares that this will reflect in his parole. Then, he returns to Karen to promise that if she marries him, the baby will not be enhanced, and John will be freed. Abraham returns to the cell and informs John that Poe's deadline for Karen is tomorrow evening. Because of this, John tells them they have to leave tomorrow morning. D-Day enthusiastically shares with them that he made Maddox's intestinator a magnet that can help remove their own devices. He's unsure if it'll work, so Stiggs volunteers to test it on him. D-Day locates his device and slowly leads it to his throat, but it's stuck, so John gives him a back blow, which dislodges. Abraham chimes in to say he's also leaving with them. John refuses because it's dangerous, so the older man reassures him that he doesn't have to think they'll suffer the same fate as his platoon. Gomez volunteers to join too, emphasizing that it's better to perish in trying than to stay in the facility forever. John can't decline them anymore, so Abraham thanks him for letting him dream again after 40 years. On the other hand, Poe is completing John's documents for release, but Zed insists him to watch the footage. The director sees Karen stealing the map and Abraham returning it. Zed proclaims that since Poe failed to fulfill his mission, the reports of the events are already given to the company, and he is to stay in the quarters until his replacement arrives. Meanwhile, the group commences a riot in the construction area after attaching their intestinator to the pipe. Zed announces that Maddox and the others are violating the rules, so it'll activate their devices. Poe hears this outside the control room and yells at Zed to stop since Maddox is long gone, and it's an attempt to escape. The intestinators explode, and John's group enters the pipe. Due to the emergency, Zed allows Poe into the control room again. The director commands to release steam into the pipes and to intestinate everyone. John and his friends run away from the steam, but the steam hits Stig's eyes. Poe commands them to surrender, and in fear, Stig's does. Despite his friend's disagreement, he stands in front of the hole and is shot multiple times. Meanwhile, Abraham picks up Karen, but Poe blocks them. When the director commands to intestinate him, the older man laughs mockingly, showing his removed intestinator. Poe strangles him, and despite Karen's help by stabbing the director multiple times with a shard, Abraham's life ends. Poe turns to Karen and grabs the glass shard to pieces. On the other hand, John and his friends discover that the robots attacking them are humans connected to a computer. John takes the bot's gun and hurriedly leaves with the two. A strike team is sent to pursue them, and in the middle of firing, D-Day's spectacles break, leaving him blind. He stands in the middle of the battlefield, calling John. The captain pounces on him just in time to save D-Day from the shooting. The three ride the cannon as it goes up, taking the chance that it can't set a target due to the lack of intestinator. They infiltrate the director's quarters and find Abraham's body. John asks where Karen is, and footage of delivery room A, where the woman struggles against the staff is presented. John takes the director hostage, and in fright, he commands Zed to stop the delivery, but the computer doesn't follow him. They all rush to Karen, but a robot fires at them, so John uses Poe as cover, and he blows up, exposing his android form. D-Day volunteers to hack the system upon seeing the main problem is the system. He downloads a virus on it, but before he clicks enter, he's shot by the enemies. With the help of Gomez, he uses his last strength to click enter, and Zed's system freezes, including the strike team. The detainees use the chance to escape, but their main entrance is blocked. John rushes to Karen and threatens the staff with the gun. Finally, they reunite and run toward the parking lot, where Gomez waits in a truck. The vehicle won't work, and the gate is closed, but the couple manages to solve the issues. Nearing the exit, Zed proclaims that no one is allowed to leave, and the gate begins to close again. Fortunately, the truck successfully passes through, and the three laugh in relief at their freedom. As they continue driving away, Karen's contractions begin, 
and they finally stop after crossing the Mexican border. They see a barn where they can rest. As Karen goes into labor, Gomez volunteers to look for blankets. Unbeknownst to them, Zed successfully controls the truck's systems. Gomez stares at the vehicle, but it suddenly drives towards him, and he runs with all his might while yelling to warn the couple. In the end, he's hit by Zed, and John carries Karen while getting away and shooting at the truck. He leaves his wife at the barn as he faces the vehicle. He runs out of bullets, so he uses a flamethrower, which makes the truck crash into the barn, followed by an explosion. John screams in despair as he loses spirit upon seeing the debris. Suddenly, he hears a baby shriek. He follows the sound and cries in relief to see Karen and their newborn safe and sound. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.